Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 laziest sequels in video games. For this list, we're looking at follow-up games that, while not always terrible, are still blatant attempts to profit from the popularity of an IP rather than doing something new and innovative with it. Let us know in the comments which you thought was the most unoriginal. Number 10. Destiny 2 After creating the wildly successful Halo franchise, Bungie left Microsoft to try something new, and in 2014, Destiny was released. But publisher Activision wasn't on board with Bungie's 10-year plan and encouraged the studio to push out a sequel as quickly as possible. I mean, they're not there. There are no satellites. And that's not good. At launch, Destiny 2 was a complete mess that barely changed anything carried over from its predecessor. It took years of content updates, robust expansion packs, and Bungie leaving Activision to make Destiny 2 free to play. But the game is finally worth spending your time on. Back in 2017, many saw it as a lazy cash grab from Activision and little else. Zavala, this is my serious face. Can't you tell? Number 9. Banjo Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. A highly regarded 3D platformer, Banjo-Kazooie getting revived as a vehicle-based title was baffling to fans of the franchise. The vehicle construction may be solid and enjoyable in its own way, but aside from the characters, there's absolutely nothing in Nuts and Bolts that makes it recognizable as a Banjo-Kazooie game. <laughs> For a time, there was a team at Rare reportedly working on a prototype kart racing game tentatively named Banjo-Kazooie. We would have loved to see it, but Nuts and Bolts, as delivered, probably would have worked better as a completely new IP. Reusing old ideas and slapping a familiar name on for good measure isn't a great way to make a game. Number 8. Perfect Dark Zero that's put a kink in our plans. Guess I gotta hack the elevator. It's not gonna be easy or quick. One of the best games of the N64 era, Perfect Dark was always going to be a tough act to follow, but no one could have predicted just how much of a struggle it would be for Rare to bring the series to the Xbox 360. Though they took full advantage of the 360's more powerful hardware in a lot of ways, like the solid graphics and animations, it was still disappointing overall, with poorly functioning enemy AI and a boring story. It's not a terrible game by any means, but it just couldn't fill the original's boots. Zero proved far too formulaic and ultimately forgettable. The perfect dark in the title was its only real selling point, and it didn't live up to the name. Let me live. Sorry. Number 7, Dragon Age 2. I've never met a human before. Dealish mothers frighten their children with stories about you, you know. Not you, personally, of course. After the resounding success of Dragon Age Origins, all eyes were on Bioware to see what they'd do next. But Dragon Age 2 was sorely disappointing upon release. Gone were the numerous potential character backstories of Origins. In this sequel, everyone played as Hawk. I'm just here to talk. Of what? The Deep Roads. Players could determine gender and class type, but it still felt like a step back in terms of player freedom. To make matters worse, the entire game took place within the walls of the bleak city of Kirkwall, recycling environments ad infinitum. The game suffered from a rushed development cycle, and it showed in the finished product. In hindsight, Dragon Age 2 works better as a prequel to Inquisition than a worthy sequel to Origins. Is that someone I should know? She's a girl who thinks she knows what is what better than I or anyone. Number 6, Borderlands 3. Ooh. 
If you absolutely loved the other Borderlands games, then chances are you also loved Borderlands 3 when it was released, because it offered more of the exact same gameplay and humor as the rest of the series. Hardcore fans may applaud the game for sticking to its guns and Gearbox for doing what they do best, but that doesn't excuse it for its complete lack of originality. Hey, superfan! You sure you picked the right team? I mean, I get it, we all grew up wanting to be Vault Hunters. And in a lot of ways, it was actually worse than the previous games, because its villains were unmemorable, and the available playstyles didn't actually add much variety. Nothing in Borderlands 3 was new to the industry or to the series, and its reputation suffers as a result. Number 5. Every Guitar Hero and Rock Band Game The late 2000s saw a craze around rhythm games. For a few years, everybody was playing Guitar Hero and its slightly less revolutionary cousin, Rock Band, both of which were initially created by Harmonix. After the wild popularity of the first Guitar Hero, the fad was heavily capitalized on, with more entries being released featuring additional songs and modes. There were even games dedicated to specific artists, like The Beatles and Green Day. But at the heart of it, no sequels in either franchise ever managed to innovate. Even the more recent Rock Band VR fell flat on its face because it was essentially the same game we'd been playing for over a decade. Number 4. Far Cry Primal Fresh off 2014's Far Cry 4, Ubisoft quickly went to work on developing the next sequel, a spin-off following a tribe of cavemen in prehistoric times. Primal did plenty of things right, the graphics were great, the zany Far Cry humor was still there, and they even devised a unique language for the characters to use. But while the map was full of extinct beasts to hunt, there was something uncanny about the topography. It turned out that Ubisoft had entirely recycled the map from Far Cry 4. In principle, this isn't so bad, but when Primal commanded a full $60 price tag upon release, many couldn't help but feel ripped off. Number 3. Batman Arkham Origins In 2013, Rocksteady was busy hammering away on what would eventually become the critically acclaimed Arkham Knight, so Warner Brothers selected its own unproven studio, WB Games Montreal, to create a prequel. Origins would follow a much younger Batman still vilified by the GCPD during his first encounter with the Joker, but it fell short on almost every level. If I talk, I get to keep my throat. Smart choice. Same old, same old. Origins isn't a terrible game, but it's nowhere near the level of artistry as the other three Arkham titles. It was clearly just Warner Brothers attempting to milk the name for all it was worth before Knight wrapped up the story. Even diehard DC fans care little for Origins, and it's no wonder the games are still referred to as a trilogy. Feel free to let yourself out. Number 2, Resident Evil 5 and Resident Evil 6. Despite the incredible success of Resident Evil 4 and its predecessors, in 2009, Capcom decided to convert the series into a bland run-and-gun shooter. Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine may have been present, as was a tricky inventory management system, but the fast-paced action gameplay lost what made the series special. And then they went and strayed even further from the path with Resident Evil 6, which, for all its homage to the originals, had even more action and far less suspense. 
It was a lazy attempt to make the game conform to popular trends in what was seemingly a bid to sell more copies. In doing so, however, Capcom lost sight of what made the franchise so successful in the first place. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure to go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Duke Nukem Forever In 1997, Duke Nukem Forever was announced and quickly entered development hell, where it was passed from studio to studio for the next 15 years. When it was finally released in 2011, it was clear that this was a game that belonged in the 90s, when it should have been released. The gameplay was sorely outdated compared to other FPS giants, the plot was criticized by many for its uninspired toilet humor, and the graphics were pretty lackluster as well. The studio which finally finished the game, Gearbox, released it as quickly as possible and clearly never saw an issue with the game's glaring faults. <laughs> oh, Duke, be careful out there. We'll see you at the party after the show, Kay. In the mood for more awesome gaming content? Be sure to check out this video here on Mojo Plays. And don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.